Let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us today for this webinar with DFC Consultants and Quick Tag. My name is Sabrina. I'm with DFC. Um, we're so glad to have you. Uh, I have Mary Miller here today with Quick Tag, and she's going to be talking about uh, saving time and increasing efficiency with AP Automation for Dynamics GP. Uh, I have everyone muted right now, so if you have questions, you can feel free to leave those in the chat room and I'll monitor them and pass them along to Mary as we go. And then at the end, we will open up the audio lines for any questions that you may think of. And with that, I'll go ahead and pass it along to Mary. Thanks, Mary, for being here. Thanks, Sabrina. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. And thanks, everyone, for taking some time out of your day to join us for how you can actually get some more time back in your day. Hopefully, at the at the end of this uh, conversation, you'll learn a, a few tips and tricks and ways that you might be able to increase efficiency and actually save some time and hopefully reduce some stress along the way as well. Um, and the thing that we're going to focus on, the topic that we're going to focus on to enable that efficiency is AP automation, specifically in Dynamics GP. And I'm going to kind of set the stage for that, and then we'll do a quick demo. Um, and I'll also kind of highlight some other areas that, if you're thinking about automation, that, that might come into play as well. So with that, we're going to get started in the conversation and, and talk just a little bit about why it's important to kind of think and along the lines of, of paper, paperless and, and the, you know, the buzzwords of digital transformation and everybody's trying to you know, reduce their costs and reduce their paper and, and, but it's more than that. What we hear is that, you know, I want to go paperless and it's an issue, you know, a company wide initiative and, and we understand that it's important and we know that we're losing time, but sometimes a lot of companies don't actually understand exactly how expensive, exactly how costly it is, and not just from a pure cost standpoint, uh, as I'll share with you in a moment, uh, some additional examples of, you know, some research points that kind of really bring this cost to life. But first, paper, the core cost of, of paper, bringing them into, into your organization. We have a customer, for example, who brings in uh, a pallet of, of 40 cases like this every week, sometimes more frequently. And when they look at just the cost of the pure paper, that's pretty expensive in and of itself, but what reality also shows, and, and research supports this, and perhaps you can relate, is that for every piece of paper that comes into your organization, it typically gets copied or scanned or somehow shared and then scanned in and reprinted up to 10 times. So for every piece of paper that you've paid for once, now you've paid for it 10 times over. And so, again, people don't always realize the the true cost or the extended cost of what paper means in their business. So the bottom line is it's expensive. Research shows that it can be up to 31 times the actual cost of the paper, which you can do the math for your own organization, of course. Across the industry, it adds up to be billions of dollars, which um, gets a little bit out of hand if, if you think about it when you just think you need paper to, to do your job. And, you know, frankly, there's you know, there's the change factor, there's the resistance factor. People are comfortable with the way that things have been done. But here are some more data points to consider that as you're looking at automation and, and digital transformation, um, some things that you probably don't have in your budget or maybe you don't have a line item for because, again, people kind of take it for granted. What we see and hear from our customers is that, you know, it's a, it's a cost of doing business, right? This is the way we've done it for so long, and a lot of people, you know, can relate to that. The reality is that 70%, if you uh, turn your attention to the numbers on the screen, 70% of businesses would fail within three weeks if they lost their paper-based records, you know, whether that was due to fire or flood or some other sort of natural disaster. And while no one wants to think about that, no one wants to be the what if, you know, worst case scenario, the reality is that we need that information. It's critical information to our business, and so we need to have a way to protect that paper, to protect those documents, to get them digital um, and go paperless in the process and, again, hopefully increase some efficiencies along the way. So another factor, upper right-hand corner, the number on the screen, 30%, and that's actually conservative. Some research suggests and some of our customers actually tell us that it's actually 30 to 40% of the amount of time spent by specifically accounting and HR folks, those that are most burdened with the file cabinets that you know, line the rows of offices outside of their work area uh, with file cabinets and paper and and more paper. <laughs> and, you know, they're the ones responsible for the off-site storage and the boxes and, and all of 
where the documents go to after they've been touched for the first time um, or pot potentially, you know, many times in, in the finance and, and accounting and HR departments. But 30 to 40 percent of their time is spent looking for this information. And what if it was misfiled or what if somebody didn't put it away yet at all or what if it's still sitting on somebody's desk? It creates an additional stress that's just an unnecessary part of our daily routine. So if there's a way that we can digitize and automate, then of course, those are the things that we want to take a look at, at how we can do that within our organizations. So another data point to consider, lower left-hand corner, 22%. This is the percentage by which paper is growing in most organizations. Larger, uh, If you're a larger organization, it's going to be faster. And what this means is that the amount of paper in your business is tending to double every about three years, a little over three years, again, faster if you're a larger organization. And, and the point there is if it's difficult to find now and people are spending 30 to 40 percent of their time now when it's quote unquote manageable, or at least we think we know where it is, if it doubles and continues to grow at this rate, um, that challenge is only going to continue to increase. So we want to get a handle on it um, sooner rather than later. And the number on the bottom right hand corner of the screen here is $125. And that represents the cost associated with a misfiled document in most organizations. Somebody put it in the wrong folder. Again, it's still sitting on somebody's desk. Um, it was mistakenly shredded instead of, you know, um, put in the file cabinet to begin with. And if that happens, if it needs to be reproduced, if you have to go back to the source, that replacement cost goes up actually to about $350 to $400 a document. And um, an additional point is that most organizations lose a document or misplace a document on a fairly regular basis. Some research suggests every 12 seconds. Now, I don't know if that's reality for most people, but it is a fact that we all lose and misplace information that is printed and, and physically um, in paper format. So our goal would be to digitize sooner, as soon as possible in the process so that we don't wind up with an environment that looks like this. As we can all imagine, um, this is a, an amount of, of paper that is going to be very difficult to find things in this. And even though most of us are probably much more organized than that, the reality is that it's still very difficult and inefficient to manage the paper that's living within our organization. So what are some of the things that we can do about that? Well, the first thing that I'm going to share with you is the concept of capturing documents as early as, as possible in their process. So make them digital first. Maybe that means asking your vendors or partners or employees to send you digital documents, if that's at all possible, instead of putting them in the mail. Um, there's certainly the advantage of integration. For example, we're going to take a look at, at a very deep integration with GP that you'll see with the AP automation workflow. Um, which segues, of course, nicely into automation, because the more manual steps, the more human intervention steps that you can remove from a process, of course, the greater efficiency that you're going to gain. So we'll take a look at capture, capturing those documents digitally and early in the process, integrating directly within GP, and automating uh, the processes as much as possible. And with that, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So what I'm going to demonstrate for you is how QuickTag does that. And whether you, you know, whether you work with QuickTag for your AP automation or somebody else, I would strongly encourage you to take a look at how this can benefit your business. So I'm going to just switch over to my demo environment. Give me a half a second here to switch screens in the display. And um, we will dive right in. So there we go. So you should all be looking at, at GP now, and an environment that's, I'm sure, very near and dear to all of your hearts. And we'll, uh, we'll take a look at how QuickTag integrates with GP from a capture and an integrate, as well as the automation um, perspective from a workflow standpoint. So we'll start with capture. What does that mean? Capture is QuickTag's way of saying, let's get rid of the paper. Let's make it digital as soon as possible. And this might be in a situation where Somebody has, you know, emailed you all of the information and you just need to attach or associate documents with within GP, with specific transactions within GP. Now, QuickTag actually comes to life on 89, 79, I'm sorry, 79 different screens through the additional menu throughout GP. So 79 screens, nine different modules, um, so not just AP. So if you're using other 
financial or HR modules, that sort of thing, QuickTie can be available to you through this additional menu right here. Now, I have a transaction that's already been created, a payables transaction entry, that I've already created in GP. Now, I didn't manually create this transaction. I sent it through the AP workflow, and we're going to take a look at that in a moment. But first, I'd like to start with kind of the end result, because this really speaks to the element of capture. So while this document was created, this transaction was created for me, you know, through my workflow, and of course, my distributions are already here, and of course, I can view the file that's associated with it. What I'd like to show you and kind of highlight in this experience is that when you go to additional view documents, it gives you any document that is associated with this transaction. I like to use this one as an example because I've put a lot of different docu documents on this on this transaction. You can see that I've got Word files, PDF, email, you know, all sorts of different documents. And so I want to highlight for you that the capture story can be a very powerful and the ability to associate documents with given transactions in GP, even if they didn't get there from a workflow standpoint. Um, but this just takes that that paper out of the mix. So all of these documents I've associated at some point with this transaction. I'll show you how to do that. We call it the tag feature. So um, within the native capture platform where QuickTag comes to life through the additional menu, gives you the ability to tag, view, and search documents. So let's go back to view for a moment. This is the dialog box that we were just looking at where we have all of these different documents associated. So I can see that I have emails. If I open these emails, by the way, if there was an attachment on that email, it comes through as well. I could have deleted the email out of Outlook. It's still going to live forever in QuickTag and be accessible to me through GP from the QuickTag connector. So just to kind of highlight that you can easily find, and then you could email it, you know, straight to somebody else that's in your organization or out of your organization. Say you found this file and you need to send it to somebody in a different department, you can email it straight out of QuickTag as well. Let's take a look also at search. This is one, so go back to that data point, right? 30 to 40 percent of our time is spent looking for documents in filing cabinets and boxes and offsite storage and, and all sorts of similar situations. So let's say maybe you can relate to this experience. You get a phone call from, you know, somebody over in, in IT and they say, you know, hey, we ordered some tablets or some tablet covers or something a while back. I can't remember who we ordered them from, but I need to get, you know, I need to reorder those. So can you tell me who they were, who they were from and, and you know, how much they cost, or whatever I need to do so that I can buy some more. So what I'm doing is I'm using the quick tag search feature. I'm searching for the word tablet. Now, tablet doesn't exist in the transaction metadata. It's not who we ordered from. It's not, you know, anything that's in any of the fields in the payables transaction entry. It's not in the metadata. It's in the document content. This is something that's unique to QuickTag in the way that we uh, search and store documents and make them easy for you to retrieve and find and share with others. So we're going to do a search for the word tablet because we know that's what the person in IT called and asked us for. And we'll narrow it down to a date range because we know that we ordered them relatively recently. And so what QuickTag has done is searched in the Fabricam site, of course, where else would we look, for the word tablet on any of the documents that are stored in that site within this date range. So let's just say we'll pull this up and view it to make sure that this is the one we're talking about. And yep, sure enough, that's the tablet PCs, and I can send this to the guy in IT right here from my interface in QuickTag. So we'll just say we're going to email this over and say, here's the file that you wanted. And get back to work. I didn't need to get up, go down the hall, or look for anything in multiple file cabinets, or a vendor drawer, or any sort of other location, because I could find it very easily just doing a content search here using the QuickTag connector in GP. So I can send that file out. So tag view search is all part of the capture experience when you use QuickTag right inside of GP. Now, back to the transaction. <clears throat> Let's say we get some additional supporting information at some later point in time. This is where we might want to take advantage of the tag feature inside of GP using QuickTag. And we might say, well, this is a, a new file that I need to associate with this transaction. Now, I can browse out. I can select, let's say it's a price quote or something along those lines. And the dialog box now says, do you want to associate this transaction, this document with this transaction? So I say yes. So it's going to go associate, QuickTag is going to associate that document with this transaction. Now, let's say we got another email 
and there was, you know, some approval that came through. Again, there was an attachment to that email. I can see, oh, here's the one we just sent ourselves. Um, I can send that email right over to the QuickTag dialog box. It asks me if the comments is empty. That's okay. And then it says, would you like to associate this email with this transaction in GP using QuickTag? And I say yes. So again, we're adding more files, more documents to that particular transaction in GP without leaving our desk, without looking in a file cabinet, without, you know, getting any additional information than everything that we have available to us at our fingertips. Drag and drop, upload, even associate an email. If I did happen to have that in paper, I can simply scan it in. When we come back to our view documents list here, we'll see that we've got a couple that are waiting to be scanned. As I scroll down here, this one, a proof of purchase that's just um, we'll put a quick tag label on it, scan it in whenever we get a minute, and it'll associate those documents with this transaction as well. So that's the capture story, getting documents associated with transactions in GP, or you can do that in QuickTag directly, which we'll take a look at in a moment in a different uh, scenario, in another scenario. Um, but the end result is that that transaction was created from a workflow. We just happen to take a look at it with the context of attaching documents, so associating documents with a given transaction. Now, where do those documents live? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, those documents actually live in QuickTag. They don't take up any resources or storage space in your GP server. They live in QuickTag. That's what makes them um, accessible. That's what brings to life the connector in QuickTag so that you can tag and search and view and find and share them, but it does not take up any GP resources. So now we're going to take a look at how that document got into GP. So what I've done is I've come over to what we call the QuickTag Professional Client for GP. And you'll see what I mean in a second when I call it a professional client, but I'd like to just highlight, let me just come back to my dashboard here for a moment so you can see what this experience looks like when you first come in. I log in as the AP manager. Now I'm gonna um, kind of tell a little bit of a, a story as we go through this process because as a former AP manager years ago, I put myself through college working at an accounting firm, and, and so I managed a lot of invoices on behalf of our own business, and also we processed them for, for our clients. So the concept of coming in every morning to a stack of invoices sitting on my desk, whether they needed to be mailed, and in, in those days, let's face it, most of them were mailed, um, you know, taking them out of the envelope and entering them into the system was part of my daily routine. Well, now I'm going to put my AP manager on some years later, we won't count them, but <laughs> we'll come in now and we have the concept of a digital work queue. So all of these documents, these 84 documents now, instead of sitting on my desk, are waiting for me in a digital work queue. I can see I've got 84 items that I need to tag. I've got 28 that I need to do some sort of edit or review on. And then I've got three that are waiting for me uh, for some sort of approval. So as AP manager, we're going to log into our tag queue so that we can look at the, at the invoices that are waiting for that first step of give it a little bit of index information um, and then send it on for approval. Now you can see that I've got multiple types of, of files in my work queue. We also handle expense processing, but I'll touch on that a little bit later. But first we'll just come into our our pro client to tag the first invoice that we see. So I'm simply going to right click and I'm given several different workflow options. Now I'm using a demo environment that has several different scenarios because we work with customers who have a lot of different workflow options within their business. We'll work with you to tailor this specifically to your workflow. I'm going to simply choose um, new invoice approver selection because I know that this invoice from Beaumont Construction that I can see on the right hand side needs to go to my CFO for approval. So I open my GP Pro Client Experience. I'm just going to tab back over to GP for one second so that you can see why we call this the Pro Client. As I pull up the transaction entry screen in GP, you can see that the experience inside the GP Pro Client is nearly identical. And so we make this experience just like the GP experience so that the person using it, so the accounting managers or the staff that are doing this initial tag step, don't have to go through a learning curve. In fact, we can, you know, um, 
share examples of other customers that kind of tell the story of it's kind of like GP on steroids because it takes all of the functionality you can see here, the intercompany feature, the multi-currency, the layout of the screen, the tab functionality, all of that is just like GP. And if you can see if I start typing Beaumont, of course, I'm going to be given that type of head feature just like GP. Now I'm going to do a quick look up just to make sure that there aren't any, you know, that there isn't more than one Beaumont construction in my environment. Nope, that's the one. So I can double click and just to confirm that it's there. And of course, everything populated for me in the header record at that point. I can do a quick copy paste of the document number, add something to make it unique. We'll add today's date and DFC so that we can track it. And the rest of our data entry experience is really going to be quite simple because the only other thing it needs is this dollar amount here. So we'll double click and copy and paste that over here and uh, put it in the purchases field. And we're done. So there's no additional data entry required. There's no additional GL coding required, unless, of course, you need to add or change something. So we'll take a look at our GL distributions. Again, just like the GP experience. And yep, in fact, we have pulled in the defaults from the vendor card. If we needed to add a row or account for something differently, add analytical accounting dimensions, add key to act, uh, job cost information, we would do all of that directly here in the distribution window. So all of that functionality comes to life in the distribution window through the GP Pro client because it's got a direct connection to GP. So it really is emulating the experience that you would do although it's really minimizing your data entry and your workflow experience because now you don't need to print this document. You're going to route it for approval simply by selecting the approver from this drop-down list. And we'll just scroll down here to Mary CFO. I love it when they tell me that I get a promotion. Not really, I don't want to be the CFO, it's okay. Um, but we'll put a comment in here. By the way, this description field, we'll just go ahead and, and put something in there so that we can track it through, we'll put DFC invoice, and that's going to po follow through directly to the description field, of course, in GP. We can put some workflow comments, please rush, and this is going to be sent to the approver as soon as we click submit. Now, let me talk for a second about the concept of templates. I don't know if you recalled, but when I did the right click to bring up my workflow options, when I was on the queue stage of this, just right before this screen displayed, um, I was given an option for all of my standard workflows, and then each one of those had a template option. So the value of that is that if you receive invoices from, say, the same vendors, a lot of companies we talk to have kind of either a 50-50 or an 80-20 kind of rule where, you know, 50% of their invoices come from uh, the same 20 vendors or the same 50 vendors, or 80% of their invoices come from the same 20 vendors. And oftentimes, they're ordering either the same or similar products or product types. So the concept of a template is that I simply save this as a template and I can say this is my Beaumont um, assembly invoice and now I have it as a template with all of the header, all of the line item, uh, GL distribution detail saved and the next time I come in, the only thing I'll need to change is the document number and date because, of course, we would expect those to be unique as we go forward. So there's never a question then if the data entry is accurate because it's already saved for you as a template transaction and it'll be available for you the next time that you receive an invoice from Beaumont Construction. So it really eases um, the time and the adds efficiency to the process. So now as our AP manager, we're done probably took us three times longer to get through that step because we were describe every, describing all of the different aspects of it. But now that invoice is being routed to Mary CFO because that's who we sent it to for approval. So we'll just minimize our pro client, minimize GP over here. And we will log into the Quick Tag Anywhere work queue, which we call Approval Central. So as the CFO, I could be sitting at my desk. I could be on the road on a tablet. I could be... Um, on my mobile device, I could be any number of places that I would have access to review and approve invoices and any other type of document that's that's waiting for me. I'll just close these other windows up and I'll maximize the real estate here so you can see the one that we're 
looking at here. And there's another example in my lower right hand corner of the screen where I'm getting an email notification. So I'll talk for a moment about the Approval Central experience. As you can see, here's the invoice again displayed on the right hand side. Here's the information about the invoice. When I come over to the GL codes, I can see that breakdown. Again, if I had key to act job cost, all of that detail would display here. If I had inner company or analytical accounting dimensions, all of that would display in this row so that I could review them just in a moment's notice kind of one click experience. I can also see the workflow history. So if I click on the little time clock, I can see that Mary did the coding. She said we should please rush. And now it's pending CFO approval. We can see that's where the status bar indicates that this particular invoice is. And as accounting, I can log into QuickTag and get a view of this as well because I might not know that maybe the CFO is on vacation or maybe he's you know going to be in a meeting for a couple of days. And so if there's a delay that I need to change the assignee for who's going to approve this in his absence, his or her absence, then I can do that as well. So I'll have visibility from an accounts payable perspective to this invoice at every step in the process. But as the CFO, I can I can quickly take a look at, at the detail for the GL codes and the timing. Again, I can see the invoice. Before we approve it here, though, let's hop over to our email and take a look at what that experience is like. So we received an email that says, here's this invoice that needs your attention. Accounting has said, please rush. You can scroll down, see all of the information about this particular invoice, including the GL codes at the bottom. And then I'm given an action to, appro to approve or reject. By the way, of course, I can open the invoice, the attachment, and see that it is uh, available to, for me to review. And yes, that is, in fact, the one that we expect to pay. So now I can just click Approve or Reject in this experience. And if I click Approve, it's going to create the reply email, put the word Approve in, and all I have to do is hit Send. If I click Reject, of course, it's going to go back to Accounting, and I need to give it some comments because Accounting needs to know what to do with it as the next step. So if I'm on the road and at the airport, I just I do this all the time on my phone. We use it for our own you know, invoices and expense reports and all of that kind of thing. I review it really quick. I open the attachment. I click reply. Um, or I click approve and it creates reply for me. I say thanks and I'm on, on my way back to work. So it's a very easy experience for the what we call the mobile approver, the person who's not going to necessarily be behind their desk. Now, as you can see in this experience as the CFO, I have a lot of different invoices and documents to approve. So I'm probably if the person responsible for approving a lot of these on either a you know, weekly or a bi-weekly basis potentially. So this might be the cleanest experience for me to come in and just kind of go, you know, check, 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 approve them all kind of in a, in a one sitting sort of experience. Again, if I reject, I have to send comments back to accounting so that they know what to do with it. And I have the option here to delegate because potentially I received this and I say, you know what, this wasn't supposed to come out of my budget. This was supposed to come out of Peter's budget. Let me send it over to him and, uh, and he can approve it. And then he'll get it in his approval work queue in his approval central view. So there's options for me as the approver to take action on approve, reject, or delegate, and I can quickly see the information that supports this invoice before I approve it. So we're going to go ahead and click approve. I can put comments here or not, but we'll put OK to rush since that's what accounting asked for, and we'll click approve. Now, again, it took us several minutes to kind of talk through that because there are a lot of different options in this workflow scenario. But remember, as AP, we did the initial tag step in the pro client. As the CFO, we've now done the approval of this invoice in QuickTag Anywhere. And now we're going to hop back over to GP and back to the payable transaction entry. Now, the reason that we're coming back here now is to take advantage of the fourth option in this list. We talked about tag view and search from a capture standpoint, tag documents to 79 different screens across GP, view documents here from within GP, even though they live in QuickTag, search documents, whether by metadata or the document contents, so that we can easily retrieve and share them if we need to. All of that is the capture story. Now we're going to take a look at the workflow experience. This Here's where the automation step kind of culminates in the creation of this uh, transaction and how you can see it come to life through the QuickTag work queue. Again, this is documents that live in QuickTag but are now viewable and actionable for us in this um, in our ProClient work queue from QuickTag. So here's the one that we're working with. We can see the invoice number. Let me just expand this field for you so that you can see the one that, whoops, my mouse is being very sensitive, forgive me. 
me just make that. There we go. So there's DFC. There's the one that we're working with. We can see our comments here. Please rush. We can see the additional comments that the CFO put in that it said OK to rush. Um, we can right click here and get some additional information. We can view the document. Again, I used to be an AP. You've got a little bit of that OCD going on. You want to make sure this is, in fact, the invoice that you expect to create this payable for. But of course, I could select multiple and you know put all of them into a batch at one time, just like you would be able to in any other um, Microsoft environment. But in this case, we're just going to work with the one that, that we have highlighted here. Now, you can see that as I hover, I'm given the highlights of the GL codes. So again, that final spot check, that, that last minute accounting um, view of the detail. I can also view all of the details if I right click and do show details. I can take a look at everything along the way that was um, header information about the invoice, date, timestamp, approval, GL codes, all of that is here for me as well. So I, again, I see my, my approval comments, and now I'm ready to create this payable transaction entry. So I'll simply click Create, and we'll put them into the Mary New batch. And away it's going to go from our quick tag work queue um, in the GP experience. We'll close this, and we'll come back to our payables transaction entry. And now we do a quick look up, and we'll go to that batch. We'll just come down to Mary New, and here it is. So we'll select that as the transaction, and the transaction automatically creates for me, <clears throat> including the GL distributions that we entered, and well, we actually just validated them. We pulled them in straight from the vendor card in the GP Pro client, but there they are for us to, to see and review. Of course, I could edit them in GP if I need to. This is now a real life. GP transaction, and when I come to view now, um, under the additional menu, there's the invoice for us associated with this transaction forever and always, even though, again, it lives in QuickTag. So the AP workflow is can be quite simple and straightforward. The experience we looked at began with the AP manager, routed to the CFO for approval, ended with a create here in GP. If we needed to have multiple levels of approval, this is often common when there's a dollar threshold. Maybe the first level approval can approve up to $5,000 or $10,000 or something like that. And then after that, it needs to go to <clears throat> excuse me, a VP or CFO or something along those lines. So we can add as many levels of approval as is appropriate for your organization and for your business process. Either way, however, once the final approval happens, that invoice or those invoices will be sent in to the quick tag work queue here in GP that comes to life in the in the additional menu. So that's the, the AP experience. Now, a couple other things I want to highlight for you because we have a little bit of extra time. Okay, I planned it this way. It's okay. We built in plenty of time um, for the experience of I mentioned when we were over here in the Quick Tag Anywhere experience in, in Quick Tag Anywhere Approval Central that you could notice I had a lot of other invoice types I, and document types. I had invoices and I had expense reports and I had receipts. So what I'm going to um, highlight in this experience for you is that there are receipts that I can use. And again, we use this here internally. I can come back over to, um, to my Quick Tag anywhere experience and just go to my expense drawers. You can see that I've got credit card statements, expense reports, expense reports in process, and receipts. So <clears throat> the story here, the experience here, is that if I'm in sales, for example, or if I'm a consultant, I'm on the road a lot. So I'm capturing receipts that need to be submitted and have an expense report created. Once a month, I have to submit that expense report, whether it's reimbursable or Amex corporate card or whatever it is that you use for that and route those reports for approval just like I would an invoice. And by the way, let's come back over to GP for one second. When I go to my payables transaction entry work queue now through QuickTag, I can also see that I have expense reports that are waiting to be created. And what QuickTag does in this situation is take that expense report, route it for approval just like we did with the invoice. I can view it here. In this case, it's going to show me the Excel spreadsheet that QuickTag created. I didn't have to do this manually. But now it's taking that expense report and it's creating it as an invoice. It's essentially converting it to an invoice, creating it as a payable transaction. So then I can create that, whether it's, again, for the reimbursable to my employee or my contractor, my 1099 um, vendor or partner, or I can reconcile 
from an you know Amex perspective, that happens to be the corporate card that we use, but it can use any or multiple different expense types or, or corporate cards in your experience as well. So before we dive too deeply into, into the expense workflow, I want to just highlight for you, remember when I said that all of the documents live while they're accessible in GP, they live in QuickTag, and here's, here's where and how they live. So if we come to our Fabricam site inside of QuickTag, let me come over here and, and log in as Mary so that I have the AP Manager view because, of course, that's give me the greatest um, visibility into all of the different types of transactions. So it really wants me to log in as CFO. We'll fix that. So we log in as Mary, and when we go to our Fabricam site, we can see that all of the drawers for those 79 different screens that I mentioned that we are attached to, that QuickTag is attached to and comes to life. Again, you can see employee files, bank statements, reviews, GLs, um, payables, sales orders, receivings, all those, um, all of those different types of transactions in GP are created as what we call a digital drawer. So remember we talked about going paperless, making things digital as early as possible in the process. Well, the minute that you tag a document to a transaction in GP, that document lives in this digital drawer here within QuickTag. So we'll take a look at the payables transaction entry drawer because that's where we were doing our uh, workflow step and our, our tag and, and view and search from within that. And let's just do a quick filter for that transaction that we started with that ended in 1752. Maybe you didn't make a note of the voucher number, but trust me when I say that it ended in 1752. So this is the one that had all of those documents associated with it. Now I can come up here and I can see I've got 31 entries, including the two that we just added together today. I can paginate through them to view all of the documents. I can see um, if there's a particular one that I'm looking for. I can search in here for um, you know, any specific commentary or metadata or anything like that. And we can take a look at the actual documents that are associated with them. So now let's pretend that we're not the accounting person. Maybe I'm the finance manager that only needs to review things from an audit trail perspective or search and find documents that I need to share with maybe other parts of the business or vendors or, or customers or partners, that sort of thing. I can come into QuickTag and find this information and see the workflow if there is any. So that one didn't have any, but if there is workflow associated with the document, it's probably going to be the very first one that was attached to this particular transaction. But now I'm on a mission, so we have to find it. So we'll, we'll just come back up here and look for the original document here. It's probably going to be this one. And we will take a look at, ah, it's not visible. All right, we'll find it. Anyway, all of the workflow history for any of the documents that had workflow, those were documents, if they don't have workflow history, they were associated directly with the transaction. They were, they were tagged, just like the very first one that we took a look at there when we were tagging additional documents. We can find them through, um, through looking in QuickTag, so we don't have to do an additional search. So all of them are available to us in QuickTag, even though they went through a workflow, even though they're associated with all of those transactions, we can easily find them and share them here with anybody who is outside of our organization. So let's go back over here, and I believe it was 2348. There's the one that we just put to, went through together, and again, we can view the document here. We know this one had workflow history because we just did it together, so there it is. So we see that Mary in Accounts Payable did the initial step, Mary CFO approved it, and then Mary is the AP manager again, entered it into the ERP system through the create process. This particularly comes in handy at audit time, as you might imagine. If, they, if the auditor comes in and we have customers who, who go through this on a fairly regular basis, sometimes every six months, sometimes once a year, they come in with a list of checks or vendors or payment amounts or any number of criteria that they see, they say, you know, show me these documents and who approved them and where they live and how they got into, um, into the system, in this case, the ERP system being GP. So we give you a temporary access to QuickTag. We set that auditor up and they start looking up either check numbers or vendor or payment numbers or voucher numbers um, or 
individual company IDs if you have more than one in GP, and they now have access to all of this information at their fingertips. And usually after a day or two, we've had customers tell us that what used to take three to four weeks from an audit cycle now is cut down to less than a week in some cases because they can get through all of this document search very, very quickly. Add to that that in addition to these 79 fields, as I was showing you, we handle you know, expense reports and receipts and things like that, we can also set up for you individual drawers and sites that could be completely unrelated to anything that you're doing in GP. They may be things that are a different division of your company. We have, com we have customers who use this for contracts, legal files, vendor documents, sales orders, the list goes on. So the whole idea, employees, is a very common use case to, to put all of your documents that are currently living in your organization in paper, again, go back to that stat of we need to get rid of, because our, our, our in invoices, our paper is increasing at a rate of 22% a year, we need to get rid of that paper that lives in the file cabinets outside of our HR offices and our finance offices and our legal offices. So it's very easy to create a site, put the drawers in them. This might represent a department or a division or a type of file. And then within that site, you can create your own digital drawers so that you can get rid of the paper. And again, that can be a scanning or drag and drop and upload or, um, or email experience to get the documents into QuickTag. So while we've looked at accounts payable and a little bit of expense management, it is, uh, and we'll head back to quick expense now, um, there is literally uh, no limit to the number or type of documents that you can manage in QuickTag. And what comes in handy there is once you start using it in one organization, one department of your organization, you can quickly increase and in, you know, accelerate your return on investment because there's no additional cost to add another site or any another set of drawers, um, any additional set of drawers to your QuickTag experience. That's all part of your capture platform. So once you start using it, it's easy to expand across your organization. Now, so back to quick expense for just a moment. Again, as we think about all of the different ways that we can accelerate our, our work day, right? We'll go back to our Approval Central experience because now we are, again, Mary, the AP person in this case, but we're also Mary, the business traveler. So we'll put on our, on our travel hat for a moment and see that we've got all of these receipts that we've emailed in. Now, I was just traveling um, a couple weeks ago and I came back with pictures that I had just taken on my phone. So I finish a customer or partner or um, sales team dinner event, lunch event, whatever, um, my flight, this is actually my you know, Wi-Fi on the airplane receipt that you're looking at here. I take a picture with my phone or I do a screen grab and I email it in quick expense. QuickTag knows that it's me, Mary Miller, sending in that receipt. So it's just collecting them for me saying, okay, what do you want me to do with these? Where do you want them to live? What do you want them to be associated with? And I've got all of these different options for, um, you know, document types and such that I can review. So we'll just take a look at, at this one. I had to get some coffee before I headed out. So much like the tagging experience that we have when we kick off an invoice workflow, in this case, we're just going to say, I've got a receipt. I need to tell it where to go. I'm going to put it into the quick expense site and in the receipts drawer. So again, I'm just giving it a little bit of information so that the system knows where to put it. Well, now again, it recognizes that it's Mary. So I need to just tag some of these receipts so that I can have that expense report. Remember, we looked at the finished product. Now we're going to look at how it got there. We'll just pretend that it was Friday. Of course, I'm looking at the receipt. I can see the date, but I'll put in, um, I want it to be in this month for purpose of uh, our demonstration flow, so you'll see what I'm talking about there. If you, in your <clears throat> environment, have the experience where people submit expenses or receipts on behalf of someone else, this often happens if you have a common admin that's shared across um, one or many teams, or maybe for the executive team, they can be submitting expenses on behalf of certain people. In my case, I have access to submit on behalf of Mary Department Manager. In your business environment, we would configure that based on the people that your submitters, your expense submitters, um, have the authority to work on behalf of. So that's just a little bit of header information kind of about the receipt. So then here's where the rubber meets the road from an accounting standpoint. I come down to the bottom and I have to select a department that I work in. So I'm going to select sales and I'm going to select an expense type. In this case, it was meals. 
and we are going to say that it was a reimbursable expense, and I'm looking at the receipt, I can just simply enter $9.40. Now, let's talk about this for a second because it's important what's happening here. Even though I'm just selecting layman's terms, sales, meals, reimbursable, what QuickTag is doing is mapping those department names and identifiers, expense type identifiers, to your GL codes. <clears throat> We're taking that information, we're mapping it behind the scenes to, um, to your GL structure, again, in GP, so that when that invoice gets created, remember we looked at that expense report together, when that invoice gets created, it knows what GL codes to associate with this expense report just by virtue of taking this sales and meals um, description here when we're tagging this receipt. So we'll go ahead and submit the receipt line item, submit the entire receipt, and now it's just waiting for us to, to do something with. So we'll come over to our expense report experience. We'll have it create. We'll create an expense report together. And we will, I can see that we've got some here waiting for some sort of review. <clears throat> some that are pending, um, some that are uh, waiting for final approval. And again, it's going to, QuickTag is going to create that expense report for me. I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll tag one together so that we can pretend that we're creating a new one. Now there's nothing for me to drag or drop at this point. We're just going to put in a date range and let QuickTag do the rest. We'll grab the 1st through the 13th, and I've got a couple other receipts in there as well, so you'll see that this gets created with um, a number of, of receipts, even including the one that we just did together. So we'll put Miller 031218 so that we give it a name and we submit it. Now, I don't know about you, but in past lives and in before QuickTag in my life, I used to travel and have receipts that I would bring back to the office. I would go to the copy machine and copy them in, usually pasting them kind of to one sheet of paper or many sheets of paper, as many as I could fit on a piece of paper, because I don't want to waste, of course. Um, and then I would have to make that copy and then send the originals with an Excel spreadsheet that I had to physically create line item by line item and wait for it to then accumulate, print it, send it to our headquarters location because I didn't work in the headquarters location at that time. And then I would have to mail it, you know, from there they would go, they would send it inner office mail to headquarters and it would eventually, you know, some time later I would get a notification that, you know, payments on the way. If that's your experience or if you're familiar with that, you may want to consider automating the expense side of your business again because it integrates very nicely with GP. So we can see that here's our expense report. It's pending. I'm going to go ahead and click send. Everything looks good. You can see the amount increased. Um, it's pulling together all the receipts that I had in this time period. There's our um, name, M. Miller 031218. That's the one we just created. And so all I need to do is click send and submit it. And now, just like my invoices were routed to Mary CFO for approval. In this case, we're going to send them to Mary Department Manager, but nonetheless, the experience is the same. We'll log back into QuickTag anywhere here as Department Manager. I like it when I get to wear multiple hats in a day. It keeps it interesting. And we'll log in as Department Manager, and this expense report is going to be waiting for us to review and approve. So we come into QuickTag anywhere. We look for our approval central, and we'll see this expense report that's been created for Mary, and here it is, and it's now waiting, and I got an email notification just like I do with an invoice. So QuickTag built the expense report, and here's where you start to see um, the additional detail. Now you can see that all of these say sales and meals and sales and travel and all of that. But remember, on the back end, QuickTag is doing that match and lookup of the GL codes directly in GP so that when this creates, you will have that visibility. Now, if I saw this in accounting um, as the department manager even before it gets to GP and say, you know what, that wasn't a meal, that was an airline or whatever. I see that she's got flight here and she put meals here or something like that. I could reject this and send it back to Mary and say, hey, you've got some cleanup to do here. I can also drill down and look at the individual receipts and line items associated with this particular expense report. So even at the, let's just take a look here, one, at the line item level, I can reject this. I can say, you know what, that wasn't travel, that was meal. Of course, in this case, I can see that it was airfare, so this is okay. But I could reject at the line item level, or I could approve or reject at the entire report level. So again, much like our 
invoice approval experience, this expense situation lets you go, expense solution lets you go even deeper to the line item level to display the receipts. So when I come back over to the top level, I can see that I have the full report. It all looks good. I'm going to go ahead and approve it. Of course, I can see the workflow history here as well. Mary did the initial tagging, Mary department manager, waiting for approval. We'll go ahead and approve. And again, just like the invoice experience where I get a mobile notification, I got a notification for this expense report as well. We'll take a quick look at that. And again, we use this here all the time. So this is the experience that, that we submit. We see that it's pending approval, shows the line items at a quick glance. And I can, again, just reply with approve or reject or click the approve or reject buttons. But I can also open the Excel spreadsheet, take a look again, whether I'm on my phone, my tablet, my laptop, sitting at the airport, in my office, or wherever and move on with, uh, with the day for approval. Now, when I come back over to GP, that expense report, much like the invoices that we worked through together before, are waiting for me in the Quick Tag Work Queue. Remember, Tag View Search is part of the Core Capture. We can use that at any time. When we come to the Work Queue, um, this is the culminating step in the workflow process so that we can create, see that create process happen here in GP. So, That'll come into our work queue here, and it'll be part of what we approve in the next batch. So the whole process of automating wherever possible, again, invoices and expenses are some examples that I've shared with you today. We have customers who do this for um, human resources and finance and contracts and, again, lots of other areas of the business. So with that, I'm going to switch back over to my slides for just a couple of minutes here, and we will wrap up with just a little bit of additional content that you will be able to see here as soon as I click share. Sorry about that. It's difficult to look at multiple screens at the same time and then still uh, tab through them all effectively. So, okay. So to recap what we've just covered, quick tag for capture within GP enables you to tag view and search documents across 79 different screens natively in GP. You saw the, the tag screen. We did several of those examples together. We also see that you can view the work queue, which is where things that go through an approval process, once they have been approved, they will come to your work queue. Whatever that approval workflow looks like in your organization is what we're going to map the business process to using QuickTag. And we have a very light technical footprint, as we've discussed, because the documents don't actually live in GP. They live in QuickTag and makes it easy for people who are not GP users also to find them. So the create process happens very easily. And we took a look at how that ends once we've gone through the work queue. And then, of course, because we use the pro client, the GP experience, uh, the interface is much like GP. Therefore, your team is going to get up to speed very quickly. There's very little learning curve because the pro client is designed just for them. And then we took a look at quick expense, which is just one example of an additional business process that you can use QuickTag to help automate. And again, whether that's using intercompany or um, key to act or any other of any number of other native GP or other functionality, um, QuickTag can support it. And then also routing other things for approval. For example, somebody needs to take a day off. They fill out a form. They using Word or Excel or whatever, whatever your native template is. We don't make you have a form builder or anything like that. You can route it for approval, and it can then be saved in QuickTag with the same level of workflow history detail that we took a look at from the invoice and expense report standpoint. Okay, and I like to share what, what I call our, our family snapshot, or at least a few highlights of our family snapshot. As this, of course, doesn't represent all of our customers, but there's something that I like to bring to life here, and that is that there isn't a, a size necessarily, a, a have to be really big, have to be really small, have to be somewhere in the middle. There isn't a specific industry, while there certainly are some that are more natively uh, drawn to drawn to having a lot of paper in their organization, healthcare, financial services, professional services, and the like. Um, certainly, manufacturing and and equipment are are part of that um, family as well. But there's one thing that all of these organizations have in common, and and maybe by now you've figured out what it is, and that's that they started with a paper problem, that they started with inefficiencies, that they realized they needed to do something to digitize the documents that are in their organization, and then to streamline those that are coming into their organization going forward, because let's face it, it's not going to get any less. So we need to have a way to handle all of those different documents across many different 
industries, company sizes, locations, and otherwise. And a brief note just about our company, in case you're not as familiar with QuickTag, we have been around since 1997, and we were actually the first to integrate uh, very deeply with the Microsoft Dynamics ERP systems, and which is why we go so deeply within the GP and, and other um, of the ERP systems in the Microsoft Dynamics suite, actually. Um, and so because we've been a development partner with them for so long, because we integrated so deeply, that's why you can get to us through 79 different screens. And by the way, if there's a screen that you need to attach to, and we do this with Key to Act, for example, um, that isn't out of the box because it's not a native GP screen, as long as it's used in the native in the GP interface, chances are we can integrate to it as well. So we're certainly open to exploring those opportunities with you. We've got 120,000 business users around the globe. And we've, again, been doing this for, for 21 years. And all of those people, when they call in, they get 100% US-based customer support. We answer phones and respond to emails. And we have an online ticketing system to put in requests to be able to stay in touch with our customers. And as we've highlighted a few examples, we can automate any process, not just AP. It just often starts with AP. And as it starts with AP, here are some of the additional technologies, as we've highlighted a little bit about Key to Act. We also work with Binary Stream and, um, of course, deeply with, with Microsoft and others. So those are just some examples there. And you may not have been introduced yet to Michael Sortino, who is actually your account manager that we that we partner with DFC through. Um, just what happens, he's on vacation this week. So I agreed to, of course, step in and, and have this conversation with you also. Hopefully you have found the information helpful. And I also just want to share with you that we have a unique dedicated landing page that you can find additional information about DFC and QuickTag and how we work together just by clicking this link. I'll bring this over to the screen here so that we can take a look together and you can have access to this information. But you can just make a note of that site, quicktag.com slash DFC consultants. You can request a demo. You can download ebooks and resources. This webinar will be posted on this uh, page when we finish it here and Sabrina sends out the, the updated link. You can view some quick videos, demos, as well as gather additional resources that you may want to either use or, or share with others in your organization, maybe for those who couldn't attend the session today. So certainly I want to encourage you to stay connected and, and reach out and ask any questions. We'd be happy to deal with um, and assess your situation, your business process, to see how we can help automate it and save you some time and, of course, increase your efficiency moving forward. So with that, Sabrina, I know we're coming up on the um, bottom of the hour to round out our hour, but do we have any questions that have come in during the course of the session today? Thanks so much, Mary. That was really informative and really interesting to see all the different ways that you can streamline processes um, with your guys' software. I did oh, unmute you. everyone, but I haven't I haven't gotten anything in the chat window, but you guys are unmuted, so if you have questions, you can feel free to ask them now. Don't everyone speak at once. <laughs> well, I'll share one that, that I often get. Um, I'll share an, a question and, and an answer that, that I often get in, in these situations, and maybe it'll spur some others to come to mind as, as you all are noodling on this. Um, and, and the question is usually, how long does it take to, to implement? And, and the reason for that is once you make the decision, as, as you all who are attending today can probably relate, once you make the decision to go paperless and to, to start to transform your business, you want to kind of do it as quickly as possible because there's a lot riding on on the, these business documents, right? And so as soon as you see that there's, you know, a better way, a more efficient way, you want to get started right away. So um, so people ask us how long it takes to implement. And the reality is there's, there's two phases of an answer to that. And the first phase is to get started with Quick Tag Capture, that tag view search functionality that we looked at in GP together, that can be done in a week or less. Typically, it takes us about three days to get the platform up and running. And, and most of that three days is us going back and forth with, OK, when's the best time to connect with your IT person? And OK, are they available now for a remote screen share? And you know, once we get in there, it can literally be done in a matter of hours. So if you want to start with phases, as many of our customers do, just by capturing documents and being able to access them through QuickTag, but via GP uh, or QuickTag, you can do that in less than a week. 
if in fact you want to explore the workflow solution that requires a little bit more you know business process analysis and some more workflow configurations and software configuration that sort of thing those take anywhere from I'll say 30 days to 90 days and the reason for the great range again is about collaboration because you have a day job and so do you know so we're waiting for the person that is going to be available to provide workflow guidance and matrix and approver details and, and all of those sorts of things so the Workflow can take more like 30 to 90 days or somewhere in that range, depending on availability of resources. Um, but certainly, if you need to get started with Capture, we can do that in, in less than a week and you're off and running. So um, did that give people enough time to think about some other questions, perhaps? Yeah, it looks like we have a question from Candice. She was wondering, um, does the system have a PO feature to match up PO to invoice? So yeah, we do work with PO invoices. Our solution out of the box has the ability to do what we call PO invoice exception routing. And we'd be happy to discuss that workflow and, and your needs in, in greater detail as, as we do kind of a discovery or, or unique demonstration call for you. So um, we use we take advantage of the purchase order and the purchase receiving and the Entermatch features natively in GP and we give you the ability to review that invoice and and do the match of do the exception routing if it doesn't match um, so it might not be exactly the way that you're thinking about it but if we can go through a, a demo and, and Q&A together be happy to to share that with you and learn more about what your specific requirements are great do we have any other questions looks like we Candace is typing in one here okay Oh, she just said thank you. Oh, okay. Sure thing. Sure thing. All right. Well, if you guys think of any questions later, feel free to reach out to us at DFC. Um, you can just email info at dfcconsultants.com or reach out to the normal um, contact that you that you normally speak with, um, and we can get you in contact with QuickTag, and we can set up a personalized demo if you want to learn more or just get those questions answered. Excellent. Thanks, Sabrina. Thank you so much, Mary, for your time today. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye.